Hello and a very warm welcome to episode 36 of My Doll's House Diary. Now in today's episode I'm going to be dressing the bed for the main bedroom. Now I know I've done bedding tutorials in the past here on YouTube but I just thought it would be nice to have you along for company as I work on the bed. So let's get started. So this is the bed that I'm going to be dressing today and this is a Reuter porcelain double bed and I painted it in this cream colour and it actually used to look like this in black and gold. Now I bought this many years ago and in my naivety I just actually began with a coat of cream emulsion paint and the first coat didn't go on very well but the more I applied I actually got quite a nice coverage. Now in hindsight I probably wouldn't recommend using an emulsion to paint metal although it did work after sort of several coats but you could use um, something like a Humbrol enamel paint or an acrylic paint although with the acrylic you would probably need to do more coats to get a really good coverage. Okay so let's get the bed out of here and into my craft room. So I've been through my fabric boxes and I've taken out all of the cream and beige pieces of fabric and I've got more here than I actually thought I had. Now I've got a couple of patterned pieces here which are really nice but I think the pattern is a little bit too gold so I don't think that will look right. I'm going to put those to one side. But I've got here a mixture of plain pieces and I've got a couple of stripes there and I've also got this diamond pattern, another sort of striped one there which is really nice but that's all I've got of it so I'd probably only be able to do a couple of pillows from that. And then what I've also done is print the wallpaper design onto a piece of fabric. Now I've previously done a whole video on printing onto cotton fabric so I'll try to remember to link to that at the end. I've just printed the one A4 sheet of that but that could be enough for one side of the sort of quilt blanket and then maybe a couple of pillows as well but I can always print another piece if I need to. And I've sort of got a bit of a system when it comes to bedding so I like to do a flat sheet which is folded and then a quilted blanket over the top of that. I do six pillows and normally sort of three, two or three cushions and maybe a crocheted cushion as well. And then I also like to do a crocheted runner across the bottom of the bed. And I've made a start on the crocheted runner. So I'm just using the three colours. So I've got the white and then this lovely sort of beige colour which is number 842 and then a sort of creamy colour which is 712 and these are part of the DMC Special Dentels range and they're number 80 which applies to the thickness so it's not the thinnest one you can get and that's slightly thicker than a normal sewing cotton and then I'm using a 0.5mm hook and that's a number 22 and I'm doing a four round square so beige, cream, white and beige and I'm not sure how many I'm going to need yet but I'll probably do that three or four thick and then as long as I need it. And I've also done a couple of videos on crocheting blankets and I've done the granny square blanket and a nice flower blanket as well. So you could use either of those designs if you want to add a bit of crochet to your bed. So I've already covered the mattress. This originally came um, with a sort of silky, bright white patterned fabric on it. So I've just used a nice sort of thick cream cotton to cover it. And I actually um, stitched along each side and then I put another piece over the bottom. So that sits nicely in there. So that's one job already done. So what I need to do now is go through these fabrics and choose the colours for each of those pieces. So the flat sheet and the padded quilt and I do each side differently. So I'll put two pieces of fabric together for each and then I use those fabrics again to do those six pillows. So let's have a look. 
and it really is just a question of placing your fabrics together and seeing what looks nice. So that might be a little bit too dark to go with that. And again, I haven't got much of that, that one left and that's what I used for the um, mattress cover there. But I could get some pillows out of that. So I'll put that up there. And then what I like to do is actually lay the fabric onto the bed where it's going to go, just to sort of give you an idea. And one thing as well that I've sort of learned since I've been making miniature beds is that fabrics that you wouldn't necessarily think would go together do actually go together. So you might think that you can't use a pattern and a stripe, but actually if you're matching the colours nicely, then you can. So I've got a sort of stripe here, which is a dark beige on cream, and that might look quite nice with the pattern. This stripe here, again, is that pinstripe on cream, and I thought it was beige, but looking at it now in this light, that's actually a little bit too grey. So again, I'm going to discard that one. But I really like the diamond, and I've got a bit of check here as well. And because that's just a nice sort of pale beige on cream, the check doesn't stand out too much, so it's a nice subtle one. And again, that, that looks quite nice with the pattern. I certainly wouldn't put the two directly together, so I wouldn't stitch one onto the back of the other. But with the check maybe as a, a pillow, and then the pattern maybe on the underside of the flat sheet or the padded sheet, that might look quite nice. So I'm going to have a play around with these and see what I decide upon. Okay, so this is what I've decided upon and I'm actually keeping it really simple with just three different fabrics. So for my top padded quilt style blanket, I'm using the flower pattern backed with just a plain beige and the beige goes really nicely as well with the crocheted throw. When you're putting a crocheted throw on, I always think it looks a little bit too busy on top of a pattern. So try and keep it on top of a, a plainer fabric, so that will be on the top. And then this bit here I'll actually have as a fold down. And this includes a 10 millimeter hem, or 3 eighths of an inch hem, so it won't be quite as wide as that once it's actually stitched together. And I've decided to do the crocheted throw four deep by nine across, so I'll have it'll go up to sort of about there, and then it will hang over one square at each side, and then I'll have a border around that as well. So put that over there, so that's the top one. For the under sheet or flat sheet, I'm just having the stripe on both sides, and again, I like to fold over the top of that. And then well, I've tucked it into the bottom as well. So if you've got a bed with a sort of bottom that could be seen, then have your fabric tucked down there as well. Otherwise it's going to just sit on top and you're just going to see your mattress, which wouldn't look very nice. So make sure you include a bit of length to have it tucked down the bottom there. And I'll talk about sizing in a moment. And then I'm going to have three pillows and I'm doing one in each of the fabrics. Now with the... Um, flowered fabric that I printed off myself onto the printable cotton. I didn't have enough left to do the backs as well, so just for that pillow I'm going to have the back in in the beige. And with my pillows, as you'll probably know if you've seen any of my other bedding videos, that's going to be my front piece there, and again I've left a border of about 10 millimeters or 3 eighths of an inch. And then for the back I use two pieces. So I stitch them together along the centre there, leaving an opening for the stuffing. And then when I sew them together, they'll obviously be inside out, but it will work like that so that my stitch for my stuffing is at the back. If you do it so that you're just stitching two oblongs together, you tend to get a bit of a curved edge at one edge of your pillow or cushion which sort of ruins it really. So it's nice to try and keep them as square or as oblong as you can. So that's how I do it. And I'll, I'll sort of explain that a little bit more once I start stitching. So pop those to one side as well. 
and then to actually measure for your bedding and I'm not giving sizes because although beds are called double they can be slightly different in size so this one just for example the mattress is 105 millimeters across so four and one eighth of an inch and actually a double bed would be five inches across so this is probably just a little bit more than a three-quarter bed but it's always best just to measure directly from your bed for the bedding so for that um, flat sheet that under sheet I like to come down just before or just above where the bed stops down there so I'll measure all the way across including the bottom of the bed there take off a little bit for the bottom so probably about three to five millimeters work out how wide you need it and then I add on that 10 millimeter hem at each side so you need to double the hem size and that's your width and then for the length again remember to come down the bottom if you need to if you need to tuck a bit in and then up there and then if you're having a fold I add about 25 millimeters or one inch for that so all the way along up like that add your fold on and then add on your two hems and then I do the same for the blanket at the top and that will just be a little bit shorter both lengthways and across so that you you've got a bit of that under sheet hanging out so you can see the different patterns together and then for your pillows measure across your mattress and I like them to sit on the inside of the mattress rather than measuring the width of the bed because typically pillows wouldn't sort of hang over the edges of the bed or they look neater anyway on the inside there so take that measurement and divide it by two and probably take off a couple of millimetres just so that they're not really squashed up against each other you've got a bit of room for movement and then with the height a standard pillow would be about 30 millimetres or one and a quarter inches so that would make a pillow of 15 inches high in real life but if you think it would look nicer to have them a bit higher if you want to sort of match the height if you've got a bed similar to this where you've got a sort of um, separated headboard you might want to take them up into that separated bit just to make it look a little bit more pleasing to the eye but I'm going to do mine 30 millimeters high so just under an inch and a quarter so that I can still see this detail of the headboard so I'm now going to iron my fabric and then I'm going to get the sewing machine out so the sewing machine is all set up and I just used a scrap of fabric just to check that the stitches are the right size and I have that set on about three and a half so just a small stitch about a millimetre and a half long and then I've just gone around with all of my pieces actually drawn on my hemline which helps me to keep the lines actually straight and pinned it together and then I leave quite a large opening so that I can fold it back in on itself and then I actually glue closed those seams. Okay, but let's start the stitching. So that's the first piece stitched there and I actually don't usually mind hand stitching I find it quite therapeutic but obviously time permitting so that's why I've got the sewing machine out today but it does just make it so much quicker doesn't it so I'm going to put that piece to one side now and stitch the flat sheet so how I do the pillows is put the two back pieces face to face and just do a line of stitching at each end so I've got that opening in the middle there then open that out and put it face to face with one of the front pieces like that and then I'll stitch around my hemline then 
and trim around the edge of the pillow to get rid of the excess hem just so that doesn't bulk up inside and then that's ready to turn inside out and stuff so with the flat sheet I just turn that the right way around and use something like a paintbrush to um, push into those corners so that you get those nice sharp corners And as well, I forgot to say earlier, but if you're using something that has a stripe or a pattern that needs to go the right way up, then do remember to stitch it that way so that your long edge, and it will usually be the long edge that goes down the bed, is in the direction of the pattern and so that you've got the opening at the bottom and then the opening can be hidden at the bottom of the mattress. And then what I do with the seam is actually just glue it together. So I just apply a bit of glue using a cocktail stick and I actually find that the Gorilla Wood Glue works really well with fabric. Obviously you might have a sort of special fabric glue that you like to use. And then tuck that in and then pull it pull the corners apart to make it nice and tight and then press it down like that. And then when I actually come to fit it to the bed I do glue down the fold as well. But I'll let that dry off a moment and complete the quilt. So to pad the quilt I use this wadding and this is the sort of thing that you would use in patchwork quilting so it's just like stuffing but it's on a sheet. Now on its own it's a little bit too thick so it makes the quilt look a little bit bulky and out of scale so what I always do is just gently tear it in half and half of it just gives a really nice sort of quilted feel to the top blanket. And that way you can still turn a bit of it over, turn a bit of the quilt over without the fold being too sort of bulky. I'm basically just tearing a layer off there. Get it as even as you can. That other bit can go back in the box for use for another project. And then to get it inside I sort of concertina it a bit like that and then poke that in and then fold it out flat while it's inside and then if you can get a hand in there or your fingers then you can get in and spread it out into the corners <laughs> right. put it on a tiny duvet cover and then once you've sort of got it flat in there, hold on to one side and give it a good shake. And that will distribute it evenly in there. So see what I mean? You've got a, a nice sort of puffy look to it, but it's not too bulky. You can still fold it, move it about. And with this as well, have a think. If you're going to be folding one side over, so mine will be on the bed like that, and I want to fold it like that so that my pattern has the little flowers pointing upwards because that's how they are on the wallpaper so I therefore made the opening at the other end there so have a think about that as well how you want your pattern to look on the fold over edge and then again I just glue the seam together Guaranteed always to put my thumb in the glue, no matter what I'm working on. Just when you're working with fabric, you want to make sure you don't then get it onto the sort of visible area of the fabric, otherwise it can stain. Like that, get that all the way along. And then again, pull those corners and press that down.
And just use your sort of smaller scissors to trim off any little cotton threads that are hanging out. And again, this seam will be at the bottom of the bed, so I'll be hiding that with the um, crocheted blanket. So that's that, and now I want to make a start on the pillows. To fill the pillows, I'm using sesame seeds. And this is actually a mixture of sesame seeds and a few flax seeds I had left in a packet, but just a really sort of small seed. And I find that that gives the pillows a really sort of plump and weighted look. So I just use the funnel to fill them up. Don't overfill them. You still want to be able to fold over your seam at the back. And then I just use the glue again to do that. So push the seeds in and this can get a bit messy because the seeds will try to adhere to your glue. So just apply a bit of glue to the under seam and fold that top one over like that. Again, pull the seams apart, tighten it up and then press it down. And that gives you a nice neat seam at the back of the pillow. Give it a pat and then that can be left to dry. You can move on to the next one. So I've just popped those pillows on top of the radiator to dry and whilst they're drying I'm going to start dressing the bed. Now the way I like to do it is to actually glue the bed in onto the bed and whenever I do it that way I always get a lot of questions saying well how do you get the dolls in or how do you change the bed in but in, from my um, sort of point of view once the bed is dressed it will stay that way. I'm not going to be using dolls in my doll's house so I won't want to sort of um, display any of the dolls in the bed and I don't tend to sort of change up my displays once I've actually dressed the room. But obviously if you like to use dolls and you um, like to display them, perhaps you have an Instagram page where you do that sort of thing, then obviously don't fix the bed in. But what you can do just so that it doesn't sort of flare up because I tend to find if you just lay a blanket on it doesn't sort of drape naturally as it would but what you can do is just use pins and you could just pin that on the sort of underside to the mattress so that it actually lays flat. Um, another tip I had from somebody was to use um, tin foil inside the bedding and then when, when it's all stitched together that way you can shape it so that's a really good idea as well. But if you're like me and you're just going to dress the bed and use it just as a model, you know, as a, a scale model, then it's it's really easy just to glue it all into place. So I'm just sort of planning where I want to do the folds. So that will be tucked down into the bottom of the mattress there. So I want to have my first fold about there and then that will allow for the thickness of those three pillows at the top there. And I'm going to glue that flap down as well. So crease the flap in where you actually want to fold it and then you can apply a little bit of glue underneath. Like that. So glue that down. Give that a press so that's now ready to be attached to the bed so I'll just pop that there whilst it dries. And then this one as well I've made my fold so I just want to fold a little bit down at the top like that and then that sits level with the bottom of the bed and we'll just overlap the fold in the flat sheet. <laughs> Better move them further and further across the desk. So again I'm going to glue that down and I'm not going to be making any um, fabric cushions today because what I actually want to do is make a couple of crocheted cushions to match the throw or the bed runner. Obviously I won't have those finished by the end of this video because I'm going to go and work on those this evening but what I'll do is I'll um, post this video up and then I can post a photo of the cushions and the throw once I've I finished them. And I think crocheted cushions are really nice in a bedroom setting. Fold that over as well. And I just sort of rolled it in a little bit there so that I can fold the seam a little bit flatter. Give that a good press. So 
I'm just going to put that on the radiator to dry as well and then I can attach my flat sheet to the bed. So the first thing I want to do is work it down the bottom of the mattress and so if I can just pop that up, oops, that's a little, <laughs> I didn't want to show you that but one of the struts has actually broken off from the underside of the bed so I need to glue that back into place but I can do that once I've um, attached the bed into that's all right. So I'm just going to tuck that down there. It's going to be a tight fit but it will go in. It will go in. <laughs> Like that and then just make sure that I've got the same amount overhanging at each side which I think I have there have sort of thumb tips width and then I want to glue it down like that and then sort of shape those folds at the bottom of the bed there to look like they're draped which looks quite nice so I'm going to put some glue underneath the folds I think I need to get a little bit more glue on my card So I just sort of pulled that back and put the glue underneath and I've put some along there as well to stick that part down and I'm going to fold it around the sides like that. I don't mind a few ruckers because obviously bedding does have sort of folds and ruckers and things in it. And I'm just sticking the sides down to the metal part of the bed there. But so you can still see that because that's got quite a nice sort of detail on it, that metal bar. And actually these folds, these corner folds, are going quite nice on their own. So I might just leave those. I think that looks quite natural, just sort of hang in there. And I have sort of used um, clamps in the past, but I don't like to leave them on for too long. Otherwise you find it starts to dent the fabric. So the best thing to do is just sort of give it a, a press and hold until your glue starts to take. And it's taking quite quickly on that metal of the bed. And that's that one. Looks nice on there. Press that mattress right down. And I've just got a little bit of a cotton thread hanging off over this side. That's actually coming from underneath the mattress snip that off and then I can attach the quilt and that's going to sit on top like that so there's just a bit of that stripe showing at the top there and at the sides so again I'll just apply glue around the undersides of the quilt so again I'm just pressing that into place and hold and then finally I put the pillows into place like that. as I was stitching them I was worried they might look a little small but they're actually a really nice fit to cross there and those two as well make sure the pattern is going in the right direction. Really like that. That looks comfortable enough to sleep in. So the final thing to do today is to try this in place in the doll's house bedroom. So let's go and do that now. And there is the bed in place. And I'm really pleased with that. I really love that the colours are all really subtle and blend in really nicely with the, the wallpaper and the colour of the walls. Let's have a look through the door. <laughs> Looks really good. So I just need to finish off that crocheted throw. I'm really looking forward to getting on with that this evening. And I'm going to make a couple of um, cushions in the same colour as the main colour of the throw, so the border colour. And when I've done those, I'll take some photos and I'll share those either here or over on Facebook. And I'm sure you're already a member of the Facebook group. But if not, I'll pop a link below so you can go over and join.
And if you have a go at making a bed or if you've made any beds, I'd love to see how you've dressed them. Let me know your thoughts as well on actually attaching the bed in to the bed. Do you use dolls or do you like to change the bed in in your rooms? It would be a really interesting discussion. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. I'm currently working on another video where I'm making a few changes to the study. And I'm not going to sort of pan down and show you because I want that to be a surprise. So I'll hopefully have that video up in the next week or so as well. But for now, thank you so much for watching. Take care and I'll see you again soon. Bye.